Welcome to the 15th floor of Radiohead Reaction Podcast, where a Gen X father tries to convince his Gen Z son that Radiohead is the greatest band of all time by introducing him to Radiohead music one song at a time. He reacts for the first time, and I talk about how much I love this song and why I think it contributes to the idea that Radiohead is the greatest band of all time. Over time, we're going to convince Jacob that he should be telling all his Gen Z friends that... You guys, Radiohead is the greatest band of all time. Over time, you're already doing that, right? Totally. My voice is almost completely back after yelling at the Mariners. And now that things have changed for the Mariners, um, it wasn't worth it to lose my voice. Nope. We uh, did the smile uh, last time. I said at that time that we'd go back to the King of Limbs. So today, from 2011's King, The King of Limbs, we are doing Separator. I didn't think we were going to do Separator, but then I put it out there and Separator really kind of got the most votes. Separator was requested by uh, lots of people, a lot of people in the last few weeks, so I'm sorry if I missed uh, if I missed some of you, but thank you so much for requesting. Uh, I, I, I love when we gives me a chance to do what people want to hear. Uh, Marty Boom, uh, Coleman Diaz, Carter Presley, Alex Harris, Ritzow, Lucky Kid A. Uh, I know a lot of other people have said it. Lucky Kid A, the last one I put on there, he was the one that just a couple of videos ago was like, you got to go back to King of Limbs. You haven't done enough King of Limbs. By the way, do Separator. And that kind of got a couple double votes, maybe triple votes, just because uh, the whole comment was good. <laughs> so thanks, Lucky Kid A. I knew when the King of Limbs came out that it was that I had I would have to listen to it as an entire album, and you really do. And I, 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 I know I just heard this or read this somewhere and maybe it's just in my mind because of it but every time I listen to it I think it's Radiohead's dedication to Neil Young um and Neil Young is a folk rock singer um do you know who that is no okay Crosby Stills Nash Crosby Stills Nash and Young <laughs> no, no, you, you know Crosby Stills and Nash or maybe I've heard that band or something like that Neil Young sounds familiar yeah or Neil Young I'm just think about Neil Diamond <laughs> yeah, there you go. Neil Young is a uh, is, is is now a, an old man, of course, but uh, a great folk rock singer. Um, very unique voice. Th there's so many parts of this album that sound like that, and I feel like I I I I, I, I read that somewhere, and I feel like I'm robbing or stealing. I, I don't want to sound like I'm stealing that idea from somebody because I have thought that several times about this album, particularly about the song Codex, and. Um, and I thought we were going to do Codex or Morning Mr. Magpie. But turns out the fans want Separator. And that's where we're going. Cool, cool. Um, the King of Limbs is a... Uh, I feel like, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, if you guys know, I don't think it was immediately as well received by everybody in the Radiohead community. I definitely uh, liked The King of Limbs... Uh, almost immediately. Lotus Flower, I think, is the most popular song from it, and I, I, I don't like Lotus Flower as much as I like other songs on the album. I will admit that Separator is like Lotus Flower to me. It was one that I didn't immediately say I love everything about it. Now, um, of course, now I've heard it zillions of times, and it's it, it's just part of this great album to me. By this time, Tom York had stated in, in interviews that he was just bored of melody, so um, now it was it was time to challenge himself with rhythms, and Separator is a good example of that because this song is is one that they generally will need the use of a second percussionist in the form of Clive Deemer, of course. It's closing track, uh, closing track. Uh, so far, I think we've done from this album Lotus Flower, which you didn't particularly love. I mean, no no problem. Maybe you gave it a six or a seven. And uh, give up the ghost, which I don't remember what you gave it. From 2011's The King of Limbs, this is Separator. Let's go for all that I've ever 
it, it's it, it's weird. It's the the drums have been, definitely been the same this whole time, mm-hmm. and like there are some parts where like okay, this is fine, but then like when he says I I have my heart. I have my heart in my mouth. Mm-hmm. I feel like the vocals there were like, oh, this is giving me nostalgic feelings of something. Like, <laughs> it reminds me, it's night, long drive home or to a place, like mostly the west side. Yeah. And this song just seems like it, it's looking out the window, thinking, com- uh, contemplating life and I'm just listening to this song. Tom York, his, his more is... His, uh, yeah, voice is more slurred. I think that's the right way to say. In 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 the studio recording, he is more slurred. Yeah. It is a little harder to hear him. In the live versions, he's <clears> he's <throat> per, maybe even purposefully clearer. He's up he's up next to the mic, and he's he's uh, you know he's being a little more dreamier in his vocal presentation. Yeah. Uh, it, whereas live versions, he's a little more direct. Um, and clear and like a lot of songs you're you're waiting for more you're waiting for the next part and this song i doesn't have it uh but it does have change and good change coming up and i'm not saying that you have to accept the 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 change you're going to hear as a good change just because it's a change oh they changed it so now it's good but understand that this change that is coming up is a beautiful uh, arrangement, a beautiful move on their part, as has already occurred, actually, um, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit change in the bass line that, 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 that uh, is enough of a change that you're like, okay, this song is building. It is building on itself. It's just never going to build up to a crescendo just because we're, we're comparing these two bands that we do on this channel that have very, very few similarities. But uh, um, Imagine Dragons are big on the build up uh, you know I, I've done this twice now and here's the big drop when I bring down the hammer and do the chorus again and that's always exciting never disappoints this definitely requires you to, to be more um, excited for m- just musical changes and just a change of pace a change of feel a change of tone and, uh, and rather than just, it just got louder and the beat was heavy and we, and, and I descanted on my vocals.
for you Radiohead fans, I've always liked the, the closeout that has a little bit of, and I don't know if it's intended callback to Meeting in the Isles, but it just it just has a little resonance there of Meeting in the Isles. I've always thought of that third verse as kind of the anti-drop. It's not a beat drop. It's not a change in, but it's a, it is absolutely a change in pace and a change of feeling and a resolution to this feeling that the singer has, that the, the narrator has. And the, uh, the finally, I'm free of all the weight I've been carrying. Uh, th- this song, more than any other song on, on um, The King of Limbs, has maybe more of a direct message or the closest to a direct message, even though it's very meta. I think that that buildup, which is not build up to noise or loudness, is build up to that little guitar riff you're hearing. And as they start layering the vocals and... Um, maybe Ed gets a little more uh, bears down a little bit harder on the he's just going through an effects pedal this whole time you don't hear a you don't hear a clear direct Ed guitar there you hear it through an effects pedal that is is resonance and um, it's a study in what you can do besides a drop to build up the feeling of a song and I can't explain it any better than that Radiohead fans will know, I think will we'll at least kind of know what I'm saying and maybe even be able to say it better. But that third verse is, it's the crescendo without being the crescendo. <laughs> so, uh, I'll type that in, the brrahaha crescendo. Yep. I can admit that this isn't going to appeal to your Imagine Dragon senses, but what do you think? It's, like you just said, it's not going to appeal, but it, it, it's like movies for me. A good example is The Godfather. Yeah. That movie is considered the best movie of all time for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I only watched the first 10 minutes of it. You and the older brother were watching it. And I was watching it for the first 10 minutes. I'm like, yeah, I know this is a good movie. I know people like it. But I feel like I got other better things to do. And I go upstairs (laughs) and I go watch it. I come back down every once in a while, see what's happening. But I'm like, okay. I, I miss too much. I don't know what's happening. I think that's a good analogy, even though I don't know everything you think about that. I don't. I don't know what you think about the Godfather, but you're right. I, the Godfather one and two are, I, I believe, the two greatest movies, and and they're they're one to me, and probably the greatest movies of all time. And um, but I can absolutely understand anybody else watching it and saying this. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy is way more exciting and funny. And uh, I mean, I I know you're not watching the Godfather for that, but. What, what entertained you more? What, was I more excited? And, and the answer is different for everybody. Um, but there's something beautiful and well done about The Godfather. I mean, I don't have to, I don't have to convince people of that. That's not an outlier's opinion. But I think, I think that's a good point you're making. Some movies that are considered not good among a lot of people, but I'm like, I think it's a good movie. It's just because it's entertaining to watch. Yeah, I've got a lot of those movies of shame where you're like, I kind of like that movie. Yeah. Yep. Music is similar, that you can be entertained for various reasons. And and you can... I've seen a lot of movies where I've been, been in the movie, watched it, and thought, that was a great movie. And then five months later, someone could say, hey, did you ever see this movie? And describe it to me. I'm like, I, that sounds like a movie I might have seen. And vice versa, there are other movies that I've seen in the theater and I thought, that wasn't very good. And then as I watched it later or gave it some time, I was like, that, that actually was kind of well done. This song, you're not looking for Separator, but when it comes on, you're going to... Uh, that hi-hat, uh, the hi-hat sound is such a, a, a an obvious sound in music. It's not new. It, I mean, Of course not. It's been around forever. Every rock song has it. It's so perfect in this song. And the timing of it is brilliant and a, a, a snare-driven percussion and a, a fun little uh, groovy bass that uh, that changes enough that, uh, to keep you excited. And then when they bring in that third verse, as I've already talked about, you will find yourself, you know, moving along to it. Every time. I think every time. I don't think anyone could listen to Separator and say, well, that song wasn't good. But they might not say, that song was amazing. 6.5 out of 10. 6.5? Yeah. Okay. It's just, yeah. Like for the people like who really love this song, it's again like the Godfather. Like it's a song like I know people love it. It's not bad, but I feel like I can listen to other songs. Sure. Right now. Yep. Not a great score, but but not a shocker from the King of Limbs. Once we've gone through all the King of Limbs and you listen to it all by yourself all the way through, I think you'll find more moments of pleasure.
That was weird. I have my younger children listen to the song and they draw pictures based on what the what the song did to inspire them. And this is my son's. It says that there's a guy over there that's saying, okay, maybe a reference to okay computer. Maybe. I highly doubt that. <laughs> and then the guy in the middle saying, let's separate. That pretty good spelling that out. Uh, not 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 correct, but he did a good a good stab in the dark there. Yeah. And then the guy on the far right is the bad guy. He's not saying bad guy. He wants to make clear he just is the bad guy. And then she really went uh, uh, struggling in life. She says at the top struggling dot 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 in life. And then that's the image of someone falling out of bed, which is of course mentioned several times in the song. So I think she just attached herself to. Uh, it, it, yeah, is this a song about struggle? Is it a song about removing your struggles? Is is it a love song with a kind of a meta dream um, angle? Um, yeah, it could be any of those things. So, Separator, 6.5. Uh, Jamie Bell brought this up. I really enjoyed this content. I don't want to sound like a complete uh, Debbie Downer, but could you please upload more? It really is a compliment, to be honest. <laughs> and I understand that. I don't, I don't take that as a as a negative comment at all. Um, I, I just I just wish I didn't have to apologize. I mean, I, I wish I I wasn't so bad. We weren't so bad at this because um, I would love to upload three times a week, two Radiohead songs and one other thing. I think that was my plan at some point. But with a lot of change that's happening um, uh, with um, work, not my, my work per se. <laughs> my work is pretty much the same, but my wife's work. And um, your older brother is is getting ready to start a big phase in his life where he'll be leaving, and uh, so that is uh, that that it, it just feels like there's a lot going on, and it'll never not be that way because that's life. So we apologize. We're not giving up. We're never we're never going to stop doing the content unless people just really stop paying attention. But just I, I really wish it was easier um, that that people would be able to. Hey, it's Monday. There's going to be another video out. Hey, it's Wednesday. There's going to be another video. Hey, it's Friday. And you know, I'd love to be able to do that. But alas, we cannot. Or we'll we'll, we'll keep trying. Uh, next, I think I, I think we'll go B sides again. Uh, I think Daily Mail is kind of getting the most from the B side votes. What what do you think we really have to do? Uh, for B sides, um, but but keep on suggesting some of the other ones because I, I may not decide to go to B sides next. I, uh, part of me kind of wants to go back to uh, Pablo Honey, and I don't know. I, I, I'll decide. Thank you for all your kind comments. Thank you for your views. Thank you for your subscribes. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Uh, hit that notification button. Where's the notification button? Next to the subscribe button. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Continue to love one another. Keep listening to music together. You're now leaving the 15th floor. <laughs>